Hello, all of you. Uh, this will probably the fin uh, final video in the vector series motion in a plane. The we'll, we'll be dealing with the properties of a vector product uh, of two vectors. The, we had already discussed about the vector product. That is uh, when two uh, vectors are uh, are made to cross product with one another then the resulting quantity giving a vector quantity which has both magnitude and direction gives the vector product while uh, prior to that we had discussed about the uh, dot product or the scalar product of two vectors where the resulting quantity was a scalar quantity without any specific direction so just let's uh, let's just move over to the properties of a vector product so the properties of a vector product now <clears throat> the vector products uh, suppose we are multiplying two vectors we are obtaining the cross product of them if they are at an angle of 90 degrees with respect to one another so the cross product This is a special case more or less so cross product for uh, angle of 90 degrees between the vectors we have the product or the result to be equal to product having the magnitude of the multiplication of the magnitudes of the two vectors which means if I am to do the cross product of A cross B where A and B have an angle of 90 degrees between them so this goes to sine 90 and sine 90 as you know goes to 1 so this is just the magnitude but as you know this is the it has a direction as well but we are more or less concerned about the magnitude of the uh, of the cross product over here so the magnitude is directly the multiplication of the magnitude which is just the algebraic multiplication but nevertheless if we do away with the magnitude part we consider the vector as a whole it will have a direction now the direction will obviously be normal to the plane containing both a and b vector as discussed earlier while introducing the vector product uh, to you in the previous video now this uh, cross product of vectors it does not obey the commutative law it does not obey the commutative law which be that being that a cross b is uh, not equal to b cross a as we know that a cross b will have a direction when we are using the using the uh, right hand thumb rule or the right hand bottle cap rule or the screw rule whichever rule you can consider a cross b will have a direction normal to the plane containing a and b in one direction while b cross a will be directed exactly in the opposite direction so that means a cross b will be equal to the negative of b cross a where the magnitude is obviously the same but the direction is just reversed you can take the example over here that is if we have a and b to be on the plane of the paper in this case that i am that is on your screen right now so this is a this is b so a cross b taking rotating it from the sense from a towards b curling of four fingers of your right hand the thumb extension the palm obviously faces from the 
a vector towards the b vector then only can you curl four of your fingers from a towards b and the extension of the thumb is out of the plane in this case which can be represented by the dot encircled that i have just given over there this is the direction of a cross b a cross b and what is it exactly it's the uh, it's the unit vector along that direction so a cross b divided by a cross b mod let that be equal to n cap right and if i am to take b cross a then b cross a i'm curling the fingers of the right hand all the four fingers extended palm facing from b towards a as i curl all the four fingers from b towards a the thumb the extension of the thumb will be into the plane in that case and in that case the direction is into the plane however the magnitude remains the same but here the direction is suppose n dash cap n dash being the unit vector along the direction into the plane so n dash cap is simply equal to b cross a divided by the mod of b cross a which is obviously the same as the mod of a cross b that doesn't matter really the denominator but the vector is contained in the numerator which determines the direction over here so n cap n dash cap is simply the negative of n cap the unit vectors as you know have carry a magnitude of one the direction here is uh, reversed so that is how we interpret the the not obeying of the commutative uh, property uh, in case of uh, vector product however in case of scalar product as we had seen the commutative law is very much applicable now the third property over here that we get for uh, the product of two vectors cross product of a vector with itself will be zero as opposed to the case of dot product where the vector when dotted with itself was giving uh, the square of it but if we have a vector a and we cross it or take the cross product of a with respect to a or with a then we end up with a just going by the formula over there the general formula a multiplied with the magnitude of a once again but the sign of the angle will be obviously zero because a is making an angle zero with respect to itself so that is why sine of zero being zero you have a null vector over here and <clears throat> obviously this vector will be normal to the plane containing a but nevertheless zero being its magnitude so uh, this is another property now suppose we have two vectors which are parallelly placed or anti parallelly placed so the angle between them is zero degrees or 180 degrees in that case obviously sine of 0 and sine of 180 will go to 0 so the cross product of parallel or anti parallel vectors is always 0 the cross product of parallel or anti parallel vectors is always 0 so that is that is the uh, that is another property as in case of parallel you have the angle between them to be 0 degrees so sine of 0 is 0 and in case of anti parallel vectors you have the angle between them to be 180 degrees again sine of 180 goes to 0 as well so in both the cases you have the value to be 0 the fifth one being the distributive property yes it is distributive in nature that is a crossed with b plus c that is the addition of two vectors over there is equal to simply a cross b plus a cross c now you must uh, take into account the order in which the uh, multiplication has been done because a was to the left of b and c and has been the cross product has been taken in the same sense it's not that you can at your will take a cross b and uh, then c cross a because that goes to the other direction so that cannot be uh, considered so this is the 
distributive property where obviously you have as i mentioned distributive property involves that or considers that you have to maintain the sense or the order in which you have taken the vectors the multiplication has to be in that sense right now the sixth property gives us that in case of uh, the magnitude of cross product of two vectors it is always equal to the area of a parallelogram formed by them as this simply is this will simply give us that uh, the area vector y the area is a vector quantity because we obtain likewise <coughs> so if we have these two vectors to be repre representing the two sides of a parallelogram in fact you can represent four sides of the parallelogram with the two vectors because the other two sides are parallelly placed so let this be a let this be b vector and the angle between them is theta so obviously this is b vector and this is a vector as well uh, considering the equal property of uh, vectors the equality now as you observe in this case if i am to take the cross product of a and b now a cross b is simply the magnitude of a multiplied with the magnitude of b times of sine of the angle between a and b now if i am to drop a perpendicular from the tip of a the end point of a over on b now from this uh, from the trigonometry part of it as you can see we have done this earlier in case of parallelogram law as well as triangle law the proof proving part of that this side is simply a sin theta the magnitude of course is a sin theta which is equal to the height of the uh, parallelogram that is the perpendicular distance between the two parallel sides of the parallelogram over there likewise the other way around you can consider dropping a perpendicular from b over to a and you will have that to be equal to b sin theta that can also be considered the height provided you consider the other two sides now whether it be b sin theta or a sin theta both of them are definitely going to give the height while the other side gives the base as per my diagram that i have drawn over there a sin theta is the height while b the entire length b over there this length gives the magnitude of b so all you have over here is a sin theta which is the height times of b which is the base in this case so height multiplied with base is what is going to give us the area of the parallelogram that gives the area of the parallelogram if it's not visible i can write it over here that uh, a cross b is going to give us the area of the parallelogram now as that being the area with that being the area of the parallelogram obviously area is a vector quantity and if we are to take from the sense a towards b the cross product is going to go into the plane if you are thorough with it you can understand that so it's going to in it's going to go into the plane that is cross and circle which gives us the idea that the obviously we can give a n cap over here n cap here is into the plane and the cross product over here is going into the plane the plane containing the two vectors a and b which are representing the sides of the parallelogram both in magnitude and direction as well so as i said that you can take b sin theta as the height while a remains as the base so b sin theta uh, times of a will give you a b sin theta which is again a cross b 
you can however consider the sense in the other way around but the area vector will be for the top surface in that case while this one as i take a cross b can be for the can be considered for the bottom surface facing downwards because the area vector is always normal to the surface acting outward to the surface right so these uh, th this was the sixth property now we end this with the seventh property the area of the triangle in case of uh, vector addition because the area of the triangle will just simply be the area of uh, will be the half of the area of the parallelogram so let's just consider two vectors over here a vector and this is the b vector and as you know that you have a resultant for that the resultant is the closing side taken in the opposite sense this is the r vector now the extension of a with dropping of the perpendicular from b from the tip of b over to a we obtain this uh, value of the perpendicular to be if, if the angle between a and b is obviously theta in this case so we obtain the value of the uh, this this uh, perpendicular that we have dropped that is equal to simply b sin theta which is nevertheless the height of the triangle that has been considered so b sin theta being equal to the height and a here is equal to the we can consider the magnitude only so here a is simply the base so area of the triangle is simply area of the triangle sorry area of the triangle uh, is simply equal to half times of base multiplied with height and so in that case what we have is half times of base the base being equal to a and the height that we have obtained is simply b sin theta and now this is going to give me half of a cross b and in this case as we go from a rotate it from the sense uh, from a towards b here we are getting the product to be out of the plane considering the uh, considering the curling of the fingers in case of right hand thumb rule or the uh, or the unscrewing of a screw from the surface rotated in the anti-clockwise or counterclockwise sense uh, from A towards B now <coughs> we proceed to the unit vectors and their cross products as we had discussed earlier for the dot product of unit vectors we are going to consider the cross product of the unit vectors as opposed to the to the dot product of two unit vectors the dot product the unit vectors were taken dot product with themselves because it was giving the square but as we have learned in the very uh, property that is the third property that a cross a is giving us this third property in the previous page that i had considered that a cross a is going to give us a zero so in that case that's more or less here this one so in that third property as we had obtained that a cross a is zero so obviously you have an idea that the unit vectors take taken taken as cross product uh, with themselves they are going to give us zero which means i cap cross i cap is equal to simply zero which is also the case with j cap cross j cap and k cap cross k cap then what are we left with we have i cap cross j cap now let me consider the coordinate systems over here these are just the unit arms of the axes that i have considered so this is the x axis having a unit vector of i cap along that direction 
this is the y direction having the unit vector of j cap along that direction and finally we have the z direction having the unit vector k cap along that direction now i cap cross j cap if you are to take the cross product you are taking it from the sense i towards j which means you are going to go counterclockwise on the plane of the paper that i have chosen or you are seeing right in front of you so curling the four fingers outstretched with the palm facing from the i direction towards the z direction as we curl the four fingers of the outstretched four fingers of the right hand the thumb obviously points out of the plane now the out of the plane as per the three dimensional figure that i've drawn the z axis will be out of the plane in this case so that means it is going to get directed along the z direction and the positive z direction obviously so this is i cap cross j cap and as you know the magnitudes are one each for i and j the sign of the angle between them is going to be 90 degrees between the two axes and the direction is obviously along k cap so simply we can write this as k cap which is the unit vector along the z direction having the magnitude one the direction along the z direction similarly as we proceed for j cap cross k cap now j cap cross k cap k cap remember is out of the plane in three dimensional case the figure that i have drawn is a 3d figure over a two dimensional plane but nevertheless we can use our imagination we can take j cross we curl our fingers from the j cap direction the four fingers uh, you can easily see that if you have if you have to curl the outstretched four fingers of your right hand from j towards k that means k is projecting out of the plane that means the palm will be facing right towards you so you that is yourself okay so it is from j towards k k which is directed towards you you curl your fingers of the right hand the outstretched four fingers the thumb the extension of the thumb is towards the right in this case which is the case of i cap vector on your screen that you have towards the right so j cap cross k cap is going to be directed along i cap in this case finally we have k cap cross i cap now the k cap k cap cross i cap as you know k cap was directed out of the plane in your case so you just have to need to have the palm of your right hand the fingers outstretched that means the fingers are pointing towards you as opposed to the palm which was in the previous case the fingers are now pointing towards you all the four fingers and they are facing to the right to the right of the screen towards i and in that case the extension of the thumb has to be along the j cap direction that is along the y axis if you are not getting what i what i'm saying over here if you are not having those directions then definitely you are making a mistake somewhere in understanding so please go through the videos once again in order to understand the previous video at least so k cap cross i cap is simply going to give me j cap there's an easier way to represent this but nevertheless we have to consider the other factors as well so if i am to take j cap cross i cap as i know it will be directed along minus k cap direction because n dash cap was equal to minus of n cap which was the property that we have considered over there right there that we have drawn this one that i had just discussed that n dash cap will be equal to minus of n cap that means this with the changing of sense obviously the direction changes exactly in the opposite way the other way around so j cap cross i cap will be minus k cap k cap cross j cap is going to give me minus i cap and uh, finally i cap cross k cap is going to give me minus j cap there's an easy way to represent this or understand this if i write this in the cyclic sense that is i j and k now if 
I do I cap cross J cap, I end up with a positive K cap. For J cap cross K cap, I end up with a positive I cap. And for I cap and for K cap cross I cap, I end up with a positive J cap. So in that sense, if I am to consider the results are positive, once that sense is taken, we take the counter of that sense that is J cross I, I cross K, K cross J, we end up with a negative unit vector. So this is a much easier way of uh, learning the if you have uh, picturized this thing then this is a much easier way to learn the cross product of uh, unit vectors in this case now the representation of two vectors as we know can be done along the i cap j cap and k cap direction that is along the three dimensional space so just taking the cross product over there a cross b where a is supposedly equal to a1 i cap plus a2 j cap plus a3 k cap cross product with writing it downwards b1 i cap plus b2 j cap plus b3 k cap we have the cross we are to determine the cross product of those two vectors now if we observe this <coughs> we simply know where we are going to end up uh, with the i cap j cap k cap notation available to us now when you are uh, for for j k and k j you have the result to be i now a2 and b3 are involving j and k similarly you have kj that is from a3 and b2 so all you have to do is a2 you multiply a2 with b3 to get the positive i cap the magnitudes obviously are a a2 and b3 and the negative i cap is for a3 multiplied with b2 that is k cross j and the i cap can be taken as common Similarly, for the J cap direction, as you have seen that K cross I, so A1, A3 multiplied with B1. And then you have, I, I, I can write this I cap over here uh, so that I can give you a pattern to remember. And the J cap similarly over to the left hand side. So J cap a3 multiplied with b1 is k cap cross i cap which is positive j cap that is over here and i cap cross j cap that is a1 and b3 so minus a1 times of b3 plus k cap similarly as you can see right over there i can just take it pretty easily in this case that is i cross j is going to give me k that is a1 b2 minus b2 a1 now in all these three cases if you observe clearly that i cap here is the first thing that is x axis that is having a coefficient a1 or even b1 that means the coefficient number is 1 so 1 followed by 2 and 3 then 3 2 interchange 2 that is for j cap followed by 3 and 1 interchanging then 1 and 3 3 that is k cap 1 and 2 interchanging 2 and 1 so this is the way to remember it 1 2 3 then 2 3 1 in cyclic order that is like this the 3 the 1 goes backward 2 and 3 remain ahead and then 1, 2, 3, 2, 3, 1, and then obviously 3, 1, 2. That is the sense in which we have considered this, which is pretty easy to remember as far as the uh, understanding part of it is concerned. Here, the 1 has gone backward from the front part. Then again, the 2 has gone backward while 3 and 1 are in order. So, 
that is another way of remembering it but again uh, if you are well versed with determinant part then we have simply a cross b to be equal to the i cap the j cap and the k cap can be written in determinant form and you have a1 a2 a3 over here and b1 b2 b3 over there which is the form of uh, multiplication or vector product of two vectors in determinant form which will obviously give you the same result that we have obtained on the right hand side at the bottom so that finishes the vectors part of motion in a plane we hope or we wish to do a few numericals on that that will be in the numerical uh, playlist uh, of uh, vectors uh, for this uh, in this in this uh, channel we hope to start off with the numericals part pretty soon till then thank you